What's up, everybody? It's Greg with Delta, and this is the Be The Difference podcast. This podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and we bring on guest speakers. Today, I've got the honor and pleasure of welcoming Miss Ann Carden. Ann, how are you doing? I'm great, Greg. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking. So, uh, so to jump right in, let's go ahead and introduce you a little bit uh, so that everyone knows who you are. Anne has more than 41 years of business, marketing and sales experience with over 30 years as an entrepreneur. She's built seven successful businesses. She sold five and is currently the owner of two. Her first business started out of financial hardship after leaving her corporate career and income to stay home and raise her kids. The first business went global before the internet and technology we have today and was sold years later when she began her next small business. Anne has been coaching and consulting for the past 11 years and has worked with several hundred small business owners, consultants, coaches, and professional entrepreneurs in over 50 different types of businesses to further their success. She's also a three-time published author for business marketing success and success success. And her latest book was Number one international bestseller. She has been a public speaker for almost 40 years, and she is the host of her own podcast, Expert in You. And that is awesome. This is going to be a good one. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. So, um, you know, I, there's so much that we could dig in here. Okay. <laughs> um, I kind of, I kind of like the coaching piece, right? Because that happens to be what I'm working on the most now. Um, but, but, you know, we can also talk sales. It just depends on you. Where do you want to go? And I will go wherever you want, Greg. I, I, <laughs> you know what? I love all of it. I love talking sales, marketing, yeah. business, growth, coaching, all of it. So whatever, whatever you want to talk about works for me. When did your, when did your sales experience start? Oh my goodness. I, so I've been selling since I was about seven. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not kidding when I say that my first business was selling craft classes to the neighborhood kids. And I was about seven years old and um, I, my dad was an entrepreneur. And so I don't know, somewhere as a kid, I learned how to make money. I learned how to make my own money. I went door to door and sold seeds like flower seeds. This is really aging me, but flower seeds and vegetable seeds and things like that. And I always had ways that I was selling uh, my services to, you know, to babysit or to clean houses or whatever it was. I, I was all about making my own money. That's fantastic. And so you you had that entrepreneurial kind of bug and spirit within you from the get go. Well, I didn't really know that's what it was at the time. Obviously, yeah. I just wanted to make some extra money. But um, it's really funny that actually came out on a podcast one day when I was talking and somebody said, when was your first business? And were you a kid? And I thought about that. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I hadn't even thought, you know, I didn't even consider that. But yes, yeah. when I look back, all of that through my through my childhood was really I did a lot of entrepreneur uh, things. So Yes. What, what did you what did you learn the most from those times? I, you know, I think as a kid, I, I never was really afraid to tell people what I had and what I believed in. Yeah. And to me, like if we're talking about sales, that's really what it is. You're you're just excited and passionate about what you have and how you can help people and what you can do for them. So if you're afraid to sell, then to me, you're almost afraid to let people know that you believe in what you're doing. And so I think that if I look back, that's that's a big takeaway, that if we could kind of have that childhood belief or that be, that belief in, in what we do, then sales actually become very easy. It's just really telling people what you do. Yeah. Children are the best salespeople, aren't they? They are. They are. They have zero fear of rejection. Exactly <laughs> right. you know, that, we that get really, all this stuff in our head. <laughs> yeah. And that really, that really goes to show you that I think what what holds salespeople back the most is their fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Is that because there, there's um, I'm I'm actually just I'm now finishing the book The Greatness Mindset by Lewis Howes. I don't know if you've read it. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic. I book. love Lewis Howes. So and it's he's so great. He's so great. Yeah. And in the book, he talks about there's three primary fears that hold us back. It's the fear of failure. It's the fear of success, but then it's the fear of judgment, fear of judgment of others. Yes. And, and typically almost all the fears, the first two fears are linked to some kind of judgment. Yes. So that's kind of the most powerful fear. 
And that's really what holds back a lot of salespeople because they're like, well, I don't want to do this pitch because what if they say no or what if they think this or mm -hmm. this at the other? And we have a saying in my company is don't be a secret agent. Like people right. have to know what you do. Don't be the best kept secret. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. You know, I, I love that we're talking about this because one of the things that that around sales in particular, we're always selling. We are selling yeah. every single day in our life. We're selling someone on being our friend. We're selling our spouse. We're selling our kids on something. Sales yeah. is a part of life, but that's not really how you look at it. But you really are always negotiating, always selling with everything that you do. Even if you're speaking on stage, you're trying to sell someone to, on the fact that you know what you're doing and, and what you talk about. And there's a there's persuasion there. So it's a skill set that every single person should master. I, I believe when you master the skill set of sales and, and marketing to go along with that, you will never be out of work. You will never be out of money. You will always have opportunity, always, because people always, if any business is ever going to thrive, there has to be marketing, there has to be sales. So you'll, you're basically making yourself bulletproof. Yeah, it's it, it is a fundamental skill that has to be honed and developed in order to be successful in business period. So but but uh, there's so many people I've talked to, man, I had a conversation with somebody maybe about a, two weeks ago and they're like, I'm just not good at sales. Mm -hmm. And I was they're like, I just, I just don't sell. And I, and, and I was like, I bet you you sold something today. They're like, I don't I didn't sell anything today. And I was like, and they were a nurse. And I said, did mm -hmm. you sell the idea to a client or to a patient today that they mm -hmm. needed to take a specific medication or maybe they needed to get up and walk around and they need to be healthier? Did you sell that idea to them? Did you convince them of that? And they were like, she was like, oh, yeah. OK, you, you sold something then. Yeah. Okay. You influenced them to do something That's that was right. in their best interest, period. That's right. And that really is what sales are. It really is about transferring belief that this is a good thing for you, mm -hmm. influencing someone that it's a good thing for them and but always in integrity. And I think a lot of people uh, sales has has kind of, you know, it's kind of a bad word. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't think of it as sales, if you really think of it as serving people, showing up and just sh sharing you know, share, sharing in, instead of sales and letting them make a decision. That's a better way to look at it. But what I would have said to her too, you, you were brilliant in asking her that, but I would have said, Hmm, you just, you sold yourself on the fact that you're not good at sales. Yeah. Yeah. You said, yeah, exactly. You're selling yourself <laughs> at, at that point. You're absolutely right. right. And something you just said, that's key is you help them to make a decision. If you look at sales as service and you're just trying to help them make a decision. That's it. That's, That's all it. it is. Whether yes. whether it's to go with your product or to go with somebody else's product or to not need That's the right. product at all, they just need to make a decision and stop being in an indecisive or an inactive state where That's they're like, oh, I need to fix this, but you're not going to do anything about it, right? Yes. Well said. I mean, that that really is the truth. That, that really is sales in a nutshell. And also especially in business. And, and this is with coaches a lot. They have a heart, they have a heart to serve, but there is a difference between a charity and a business. So you have to draw that line. And if you're going to be a business, sales is a skill set that you are going to have to develop. That's it. If you're not willing to do that, you should probably just work for someone else. I mean, that's the reality of it. There is not a business without sales and you can't pawn that off on other people either even as an entrepreneur, you're still working for somebody like you're still like you. Absolutely. You know, and that's the fact. I actually had this conversation with one of my agents yesterday and it was like, if you can't hack this, if you're not going to be able to do this, then you probably need to go, you know, go to a nine to five where someone just tells you that's specifically right. what to do and you have to work for somebody. However, make no mistake. It's no different than here. Like <laughs> right. as an entrepreneur, you just work for yourself. So like, it's almost like you have two personalities within yourself. You have your boss and then you have the, mm -hmm. the, the actual employee where you have to do your physical, your daily activities, whatever it may be. Right. But you're just telling yourself what to do. All you're doing is you're substituting yourself for somebody else, but you're still following the rules, the guidelines, the, the, the right. everything that needs to happen in order for you to be successful in this business versus being successful in somebody else's business. That's you still right. have, you still have someone that is your boss that you're following. 
You know, it's really a shame too when when I when people are maybe coming from a, a job of some kind and and they're stepping into entrepreneurship. I the one thing that I think is really missing out there, especially in the coaching space, is I don't think people are completely upfront and honest about should you really be an entrepreneur. I mean, I think if people were more upfront about that, this is what it's going to take. If you're not willing to do this, this isn't the right thing for you. I agree, a thousand percent. Yes. I agree a thousand percent. That's something that um that for my industry. So in the life insurance industry across the board, it is, do you have a pulse? Can you get a license? Right. And, 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 and make no mistake. It's, it's very much of an entrepreneurial position because you're on your own. You, right. Anytime you're, you're making that, your own way. Right. You're, you're 1099. You're mm -hmm. you, if you don't work, you don't get paid, you know, mm -hmm. for the, for the most part, there's some insurance companies that you can get a small salary and there's very, very far and few between, but across the board, it is like we hire everybody because it's a numbers game for them because they know mm -hmm. that there's going to be somebody in there that's going to do it. And there's going to be people in there that just aren't going to do it no matter what you do. Right? right. And so I always saw that and I was like, man, because, because the average percentage that they, they, in the insurance industry is 8% of people that get their license and start actually have any modicum of success. Ninety-two wow. percent don't. Wow. Ninety-two. Well, if you think about it, that's practically the failure rate for entrepreneurs as well, and for yeah. business owners, it, it's around eighty-five percent. And within ten years, or, I don't know. I, I would have to look at the statistics again, but it was it's it was around eighty-five or eighty-seven percent failure rate within a three to five year period. Yeah, and it's and it's it's staggering to see that and think, man, if we just put some systems and processes in place and had honest, transparent conversations with people and put them through an onboarding process that would test them to mm -hmm. see if they have the capabilities to be successful, we could weed them out quicker, which would, yes. it, which is like, hey, one, we're not wasting our time with people that aren't gonna work, but two, they also understand like, hey, this isn't gonna be a good fit for me. Like, I probably need to go back and it's, it's good for both parties. Yes. And so, yeah. Um, that's what, well, that's what we did or this was, that's the structure that we set up when I, when I created Delta financial was let's put some systems and processes in place to see if people can actually hack it. And mm -hmm. then if they can't, we don't have to worry about wasting our time to make sure that they're, that they're going to be successful because they're not going to be successful. It's just, right. it, it's going to be a waste of their time. Well, as an entrepreneur, especially if you're hiring people or, or if you're if you're bringing people in and you don't want all that turnover, you don't want to take people's money if it's not the right thing. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of things there that uh, that would that's a great that's a great idea to do that because it really would weed people out. And not only that, I think that it would um, eliminate a lot of hardship for people because yeah. it takes money to get into entrepreneurship. It doesn't matter what you do. There's money that will have to be invested or there's time that will have to be invested. And especially if you're working in nine to five, now that's time that you're taking away from other things, from your life, from your family to grow that business or to build that business. And so um, it, it would just really save people if those types, I don't really work with startups in that capacity. So um, so that it, but if I did, that would definitely be something I would want to do. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah. It's, it's something that's been helpful for us mm -hmm. to, um, and we've, we're constantly, we're constantly, uh, uh, tweaking it. Like recently mm -hmm. we just partnered with, uh, um, predictive index. So now we actually do a personality test ahead of time. And we have mm -hmm. the four main personalities that are are most likely to be successful in sales mm -hmm. and then um but it also gives us ideas of like how to coach them appropriately based on their personality mm -hmm. and so when we bring them on like how to how to get them to move how to get them to act all this stuff and so um we started implementing that so that we could see a snapshot ahead of time and be like hey d is there is their personality the complete opposite of sales like they're not going right. to be very good or mm -hmm. is it within that realm that the four main ones are are adjacent to them to where they would still be successful? And yeah. it's been it's been very helpful for us. 
You know, I do want to bring something up, though, kind of a story. I actually have this in my first book. I had an employee that worked for me at one time and I owned health clubs and she was my really my right hand person. But when we started ramping things up and I added another uh, entity to my business and, and we opened a weight loss center, uh, sales was a huge, huge piece of that. And, you know, if you've ever sold any kind of weight loss or anything that there's a lot of sales skills that have to go into that because you have to get people to that emotional place where they're ready to make a change. So she was really um, so upset that she had to now start selling. And and she had been with me for a very long time, but my business evolved, my business shifted. And so this is what it's going to require now until we need to bring in more people for sales. And so long story short, she, she was so upset. I really thought she was going to, to leave or to quit, but she didn't. And I trained her and she actually became the best sales person that I had in my entire company. She even went with me when I expanded and opened two more businesses. And that was such a, she wasn't the kind of person that you would have thought to be able to do sales effectively. But when she really learned how to just care about the other person and how to really have conversation with them, and she realized that that's really what it took and that she couldn't we couldn't help them if we didn't make that sale, if we didn't get them to admit that they needed that help. She everything shifted for her and, and she just came awesome at sales. And it was so funny when I finished that very first first book. And again, this was this book was like 13 years ago, but I handed her a copy and I said, I don't remember what page it was, 60 or something. I said, you'll probably recognize the story. And on page 60, because it, it was all around her and I was talking about sales and and how it is a skill set and how it is a learned skill. But but she was such a, a great testament to the fact that it can be learned and and you can become really, really great at it as well. And now she actually has her own business. I'm not in health clubs and all that anymore, but she actually has her own training business now. And had she not developed that skill that would have never been an option for her or an opportunity for her. She wouldn't have done that. She would have always been afraid. It's it's uh, when you change the perspective of how you see sales and it turns into more of a Socratic method of asking really good questions, mm -hmm. understanding the person in front of you or the, the client, the potential mm -hmm. client you're sitting with getting good, valuable information and then finding out through more questions where they want to be. Right. You know, like where they are currently, where they want to be, what's a, what's the desired future, desired end state. And then deciding at that point, does my product bridge the gap between those two? And That's if it right. not, then if it does, then you, Hey, I think this is going to be a good fit right. for you. Let me show you how, let me show you how it would bridge that gap. Let me show you how mm -hmm. I can help you to get there. And just by you having those questions, it's automatically going to bring up some emotional. Right. Responses. That's right. Yes. I mean, it is really about asking the right questions to move people either closer to wanting to buy or to let them think, I don't really want this. And so if you're asking the right questions, it really does. It actually does the heavy lifting for you. The mm -hmm. other thing I would say is qualifying, having a qualifying process in place is huge because then you're not speaking to people that aren't ready. They, they don't really want it. Maybe they are just thinking about, oh, I want to get on the phone with you and just see, you know, those are, those are not serious people. And I, I just, I don't believe in any kind of pushy sales or anything like that. And so to me, that's where a lot of people, that's how they view sales. But if you're really in integrity and you have the right processes in place in sales, it really it can be a fun conversation. And you're sitting with someone who is ready because you've already qualified them. I've had people go through my process and and they'll say, Ann, I got so much clarity just filling out your application <laughs> to get on a call with you because it really uncovered the things that they need or that they thought that they needed. And it, it just really gave them that clarity around, gosh, this is something that, that I really want. Uh, I also have a question on there, you know, on a scale of one to 10, <laughs> how ready are you? How much do you want this? And so all of those things help you be in front of the right people. And that simplifies sales so much. I can't stress that enough with people. So if they're having a hard time with sales, they probably need a better process is what I would say.
Yeah. I'm actually curious. So you have your, for your coaching, uh, uh, calendar scheduling link, mm -hmm. they fill out a questionnaire. You have a bunch of questions that basically pull out a lot of the information on the front oh, end. Oh, absolutely. And That's I want to know smart. that I, yeah. And I want to know that I have a qualified buyer too. Um, I don't have time to, I have so much content out there. I'm on podcasts like this all the time. I have my own show. It's like, if you want to pick my brain, go watch my stuff. You're, I'm not going to get on a call so you yeah. can pick my brain. So my calls, and I'm very clear about this in my marketing, my calls are for people that are serious about wanting my help and they want to get on a call to see what that looks like. And so I'm very clear about that in my marketing. And so when people book that call with me and I tell them there is an application process, I want to make sure before I waste your time, before I waste my time, that you are in the place where I can help you or you have the type of business where I can help you. And so that there's two things that does. It prepares them for the call, which is what they will often tell me. But it also prepares me for the call because now I can go check them out. I can look at everything. I can say, yes, I can definitely help this person. And when you do that, you'll actually have a much higher close ratio. I mean, they're probably just really getting on there to find out, OK, what's the investment and how would we work together? And when you have that kind of a conversation, it is so much easier. They typically will ask me to buy. I don't even bring it up. I just walk them through. I dive deeper into the questions and into the things that they said they wanted. And, and then they say, okay, but tell me, how do, how do I work with you? What's the investment? That's a very different sales conversation. So that's what very I do. Different. And that's what I like to teach people. Very different. I love that. I love that. How are you getting, how are you getting your, the, the clients to click the link or is it just through your content, just constant putting out content and like sharing your link every, everywhere you, you know, put out information? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, my email list, I have, um, I'm very active on social media. I have a YouTube channel. So my call to action for my, my book, a call is everywhere. I mean, you'll have no trouble finding that, mm -hmm. but I'm also very clear in my marketing, who it's for, who it's not for, who I work with, who I don't, I, I, help people build really, really high end businesses. So getting those really premium, um, 30,000, 50,000, hundred thousand dollar plus clients. So that's the, the level that I play with in my business and that I teach my clients. And so all of that really comes out in my marketing. So they already figure, okay, if Anne's going to help me get a 50,000, get $50,000 clients or hundred thousand dollar clients, she's probably not going to be a thousand dollars. Right. And so they make that correlation that, uh, I'm I'm a high end coach that I do what I teach people as well. And yeah. so, yeah, I just put it everywhere. And it's just important that you just have that call to action everywhere. Nice. Nice. I, I love that. That's actually I'm taking I'm going to take a note of that because I, I, that's what I have. a I have a, a calendar booking schedule mm -hmm. as well, but it's only like a couple questions. And I'm oh, like, yeah. No, you want to qualify them. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the other thing, like we were talking about in a sales conversation, when you're qualified, when you're asking the right questions, they're also saying, oh, my gosh, I hadn't thought about that. Or, oh, I didn't really think I needed that. And, and so what you're really doing, you, that application is really influencing them even more to move forward. And so if you have, so it's important that you're asking the right questions. And I ask the questions that I would really be asking them on a call anyway. So it leverages time. And then when we get on a call, I just get to go deeper with them in those conversations or, or go deeper into their answers to the questions and find out even more. And that just saves a lot of time on the call. We really can dive in. A lot of my calls are very, very fast because we've already done a lot of that pre-work. So there's no convincing. It's like, you, you know, you're on here for a reason and this is something you're either going to want to do and invest in or you're not. And so there's never any pushiness. I always want them to leave with a great feeling. I was actually taught, oh, this is so horrible. When I came into the coaching space, I was actually taught the pushy sales tactics by um, a, a program I had invested in. And it, it, it just, I felt like it, it really was so out of integrity for me and who I am, mm. but I tried it. I, I listened to them and I tried it and I felt like I 
the first few that I did, I felt like, wow, I really blew that. I made an enemy instead of a friend. And I vowed that I would never do that again. So it, it's important that you that you have a brand and that people leave with a good feeling when they have a conversation with you. Because I used to say people don't come back, but that actually has not been true for me. Um, we, I was even taught that people don't come back. There's, you know, people don't come back, but I have, when you treat people right. And when they really truly believe that you're the person, but maybe there's just something with the timing or there's just the financial piece of it didn't work. If you treat them right and you continue to keep that relationship going, they will come back. Man, that's good. That's good. I, um, I mean, I haven't been, I just started coaching recently. I've been coaching agents just by word of mouth mm -hmm. uh, and people by word of mouth, just by them watching my fitness journey and seeing things like, oh man, what are you doing? And, and then slowly picking up people. And then finally I was like, why am I not doing this wide? Like I could, yes. I could help so many more people because there's so many more benefits when it comes to, it's not just physical fitness, it's mental fitness, it's emotional right. fitness, it's spiritual fitness. And so um, when you start to increase all those areas of your life and, and really truly get into alignment. And um, I was, you know, I'm, I want to do this for as many people as I can. And I, and I went and I made my company and I started to do coaching wide and um, it's just been, I mean, it's been great, but I'm like, I'm trying to help. I'm a, I want to help more people. You know, mm -hmm. I can take, I can, I can handle a larger load. And so I'm looking for other strategies that I can like, man, how can I, how can I get my, my information out there to more people? How mm -hmm. can I, uh, you know, qualify these calls a little bit better? Right. That's, that's, this is leverage a your time. Yeah. Leverage my time. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Cause I have had a lot of calls where it's like, where we go through it and they're like, yeah, I just don't have any money right now. So it's like, why did you, why did we get on this call? Right. Yeah. Why, why had time you, for that. No, no, no. I, yeah, why did you even yeah. guys call me? Like, yeah. If I could be sitting on calls like that all day long. I mean, if I, if I allowed that literally yeah. I could be sitting nonstop on, on zoom calls all day long, letting people, here's the other thing about the qualifying process. So the, the application process that I have, it also weeds out salespeople. <laughs> so if they, if they don't fill out the form, a lot of times people will see the form and they'll be like, Oh, I'm not in the right place. I like, I can already tell that I'm probably not the right fit for mm. Anne. And so it also, people will self-select out, which is perfectly fine. Because yeah, they wouldn't have done it anyways. Absolutely. They would not have done it anyway. So if they don't fill out the form, I, I always give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Tech happen, tech glitches happen, right? So I'll send them an email with a link and say, Hey, there was a second step to keep your call booked. We just need the, the form filled out. And then if they, or, or, you know, we can reschedule at a later time and they'll either cancel it or if I don't get the form back, then I cancel it because I'm only going to talk to people that are serious and are ready and they just need to know what that next step is or how they can take that next step. So it's a very different place to come from. I love that. I love that. It's a great way to really ensure that you're not wasting your time to get rid of tire kickers. 100 percent right? because experienced a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. That's that's, yes. a, that's a great tip. Thank you for that, Ann. I'm going to apply You're that. Welcome. I'm going to apply You're that welcome. now. Um <laughs> so so if if there is anyone listening that's that's in the coaching business or they're starting a coach business similar to myself, what are some what are some uh lessons learned that you have that can help them to kind of expedite maybe their journey a little bit or mm -hmm. to uh to level up their game? I could give you so many. I mean, it's why I wrote my book because I went down so many rabbit so holes. First tip, go read your book. <laughs> first tip, don't go down a million rabbit holes and try to, okay, so so a lot of the things that are taught in the coaching industry, um, I feel really leave coaches in a, in a bad place financially in their business. So one thing is, okay, sell a $7 thing and then send people up. And, and that does work in some industries. The problem is, and here's what I want people to know, 
it's as much work to sell something for $7 as it is to sell something for $7,000. So just think about that. I'm all about helping people be able to grow faster. So everything's high end. And when you do that, you're build, build your business around your expertise. So that would be the first thing I would say. If you're not building a business around your expertise, something that you're so confident in, something that people are asking you for, they're already asking you for that because they believe that you know what they, you have the answers and, and it's your ex, it, it's your excellence and it's your expertise. That is such a faster path because then you just have to learn business, marketing, sales, and the other pieces. But if you have to learn your thing, I see so many people go out. Oh, I have to get a certification. Oh, I have, I'm going to go buy into this program so I can learn how to do this thing. And it will take them years sometimes to get out of the gate. And I see that over and over again, people selling their stuff, become a leadership coach, become a whatever coach. If, if you take what you're already really great at, you don't need certifications. I have never, ever had anyone ask me, do you have, how many certifications do you have? And I, I've never had anyone ask me. And yeah. even when I was in the fitness industry, I probably had 30 or 40 certifications for everything you can imagine. No one ever asked. They, they never ask. It was always just, I felt better that I got it. But in the coaching space, if you build it around where you're already excellent and you don't have to convince people, you don't have to have confidence. Mm -hmm. You just need to go out and start helping people. I mean, that's what I did when I came into the coaching space. I, I had built businesses. I had business owners saying, how did you build all these businesses, be successful, sell them? And I found that I just started talking to people and it was a natural um, it was really a natural progression. And it was so easy for me to step into the coaching space and begin coaching because all I had to do was tell people, yeah, I'm going to help. I want to help other people, you know, grow their business and build their business. And it wasn't a shock to them because it wasn't unrelated to what I had been doing. I was just the coaching piece mm -hmm. was new, but I'd also coached thousands of people in fitness and in health and all of that. So that even didn't feel weird to me to coach yeah. people. To just so, go through the coaching. Yeah, it just it's just a faster path. And I just when I see people go down these other these other paths, it's just slow. And it's a lot of times why they burn out. So they either are selling low things and trying to send people up or they're not building around their expertise. Those are all things that stop coaches in their tracks. And really, it, it really does burn them out. Most of them don't succeed like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, um, that's a, that's a great point is, and that, that was a, so the, my coach that I have that helped me to start my coaching program basically said something similar, but he was like, whatever you've been through, whatever you've healed yourself in life, like if any tr trauma or challenge that you've been through that you've been able to overcome and heal yourself, it, it's your obligation to help others through it. And that's your, that's your 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 market that's the people that you're looking to coach is the same that's people right. that are going through the same thing that you're going through very similar concept you you yeah. you happen to walk the path of all these different businesses and uh, and building them up and then getting to more where they sold you sold them and starting another one and and now you're helping other business owners scale right. their business so same exact concept and, right. and and honestly like that was that was pretty eye opening for me Cause I was like, yeah, I guess I am an expert at that. Like, cause I've, yeah. I've lived it. Like I've, I've a lot I've, of people and they don't think like that. Uh, you know, when I started everyone, it was, so when I started my fitness business, the reason I started that is because I had gained 50 pounds in my other business that I had and I started losing the weight eating. And then I, I fell in love with it and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to learn more about this. And I, I started doing the nutrition and I did get certifications because at that time I didn't really know what else to do to get the education and all of that. But um, I didn't, it, it wasn't the certifications that convinced people to, to take fitness classes with me in a community hall, which is how I started um, that business. It was the fact that I lost 50 pounds that I looked the way I did and they believed that I could help them do it too. And they even said, I want to look like you do. Um, I wish I looked like that now, but I don't, but there, there is that I'm also, you know, 40 or 30 years older, but um, so but it was an easy thing to start because people believed it. 
because mm-hmm. I was living it. And, and they saw that what I had overcome and what I had done. So again, around something that I'd kind of become the expert at, and I was passionate about it. I believe that passion is a huge driver, but it can't be the only driver. You still have to have a viable product that people will want to buy and that can yeah. make money and build a business. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is this has been great. I love this. <laughs> this is a great conversation. Yeah. Um, um where if anyone wants to learn more about your coaching or they just want to learn more about you, your business is all that, what's the best place to kind of look look you up, follow you, follow find your content? You talked about you have a lot of content. You I know, do. you talk about your podcast and what you do. Um, where, where can they find all that? Oh gosh, take your pick. Um, so you, you can always go to my website at annlcarden.com and I have a lot of free resources on there. I also have my podcast videos are on, on there. I have blogs on there. You can get all of my social links as well, but I, I'm on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn is a huge place for me. I'm on Facebook. Yo, I'm, I'm barely on Instagram. I, I'll just say it's not my main place, but, um, there's, y'all have no trouble finding me and, and follow me and connect with me. I would love to. Fantastic. And, and, and the, the, the last question I have all for all my guests is, uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> you, you have the opportunity to sit with, learn from, uh, have a conversation with break bread with three individuals, anyone in history, alive or deceased, who mm-hmm. are they and why? Oh my goodness. Wow. This is a, this is a tough one. Okay. Well, I would have to say Jesus first. Okay. That would be amazing. That would be an amazing conversation. Um, yeah, I just I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. So I don't I don't I, even I have think words it would be more that. more him asking questions of you. You like ask a question and he respond with a question. To That's get you to true. Think about the yes, <laughs> that is true. That's true. Um, I I'm trying to think as far as um, oh gosh, you really threw me. I think there's a couple people in the industry that I would that I would really love to. Uh, talk to actually Lewis House would be one. I really like him. I like um, and and Alex Hermosi is somebody that I really is Alex. Enjoy. He's I, brilliant. I think he is so smart and he's so humble, yeah. but he's so on point. I love his. I just love his attitude. Um, it's so funny when I have to just tell you this quick story. Go ahead, when go I ahead. was in the fitness industry, Alex was doing his thing at the time. Jim and Lodge. I can remember, I actually kind of laughed about this, but I can remember getting emails from him about his gym launch method. And I remember responding back to his email. I want to talk to you about this. I'm interested in this. And I never heard from him. And I thought, what the heck? (laughs) That was probably about the time he quit all of that because he had so many issues. It was just funny to think about that and then to see what he has accomplished now. So yeah, I, when he was, back starting that it was it was crazy but yes he didn't have good customer service so but um no i think i think he's brilliant and i i just really like his just his realness and and you know just his his attitude about things so i think i would prefer to sit with current people more yeah. so than past people if that yeah he has yeah. a he has a way of breaking down complex concepts and explaining them in like a no nonsense, just kind of simple yes. way and yeah. like linking it all together and where you're just like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I know. Like- I, you know, I think about that. I think, oh my gosh, I've been around for all these years, a lot of years. Right. And I mm-hmm. feel like I have a lot of knowledge and experience and wisdom. And when I, that's why when I can feel like I can just really learn, still learn from somebody um, that I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way before. Uh, Those are people that I love to listen to or resonate with because I always loved, like you said, breaking things down. It can be the simplest thing. There was, he had a short today that I I was watching. I watched uh, several of them, but I was traveling this morning in a, in a vehicle. So I was listening to some of his things. I wish I could remember what it was, but I thought, oh my gosh, it wouldn't even sound like something he would talk about but it was brilliant. Like everything he, he puts out there, it's so practical. Mm. And I think that's what I really, really like about him. But yeah, I, I think um, yeah, those would be my three. 
Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ann, for coming on the podcast and sharing you. some of your sales and coaching expertise. I really do appreciate it. This has been a fantastic episode. Well, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, for those of you listening, this has been a value-packed episode. And if you're listening to now, then I know you got value. So do me a favor. Do Ann and I a favor. Share this content with somebody else that can also get value from it, that can learn from it, that can grow, maybe even change their perspective and change the way that they see things, especially when it comes to sales. Because as Daniel Pink says, to sell is human. So we all sell at all times. Um it takes you 60 seconds just to rate, review, subscribe, or share this content, but it means the world to both Anne and I. This has been the Be The Difference Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Birch. Until next time, we'll see you.